in the early 2000s, Columbia Pictures funded... Oh, this is news to you, by the way. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> Columbia Pictures funded a series of movies starring a man who's bitten by a spider. Oh, yeah. Who inhabits the powers of a spider. He's man called... spider. No, no, no. <laughs> spider man. Oh, all right. Directed by the famous director Sam Raimi. Oh, yes. The Quick and the Dead. Yes, that guy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that, that little gem. Yeah. Starring uh, Tom Campbell. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, obviously... Uh, Sam Raimi of Evil Dead fame. Oh, yeah. Um, so he rose up and made a, a, a trilogy of films about Spider-Man based on the famous comic book series. Oh, yeah. Um, you can stop doing that, by the way. Oh, okay. <laughs> good. Is it distracting? Uh, it's a little bit weird. I was trying to show the wide-eyed wonder of a boy first <laughs> first bit by his love of Spider-Man. Oh, <laughs> oh, that was unintentional. Um, so, yeah, <laughs> so he, he made a trilogy of films. Yeah. Signed to him, Maguire and Kirsten Dunst and... Various other array of actors. Franco. Just Franco. Franco, yeah. yeah. Um, first one, good little movie. Second one, really good little movie. Third one, not so good little movie. Bit of a mess. Bit of a mess. Some good parts in there, some bad parts. One scene where Kirsten Dunst and James Franco make the lunch together. <laughs> um, it left it in the movie. Uh, and after that, Sam Raimi and the studio had disagreements about the direction of Spider-Man 4. Apparently Tobey Maguire didn't want to come back. He did not, No. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Sam Raimi wanted to take it in weirder directions. Yeah. Uh, the studio disagreed. I think Sam Raimi wanted really obscure villains like <laughs> The Vulture and Mo Mobius the Vampire. And yeah. can, can Bruce Campbell be Spider-Man? <laughs> <laughs> That'd be awesome. Well, I, I just want to give the audience the, the best possible uh, version of Spider-Man. Yeah. Just a, just a little bit of magic. <laughs> bit of magic. Um, so, because of that, uh, basically Sam Raimi was fired. Wee. And by this point now, Sony owned Columbia. So Sony steamrolled ahead, cancelled Spider-Man 4, announced it was going to reboot with The Amazing Spider-Man, which came out a few years ago. Was that less than amazing? I hated it. <laughs> I despised it. I also disliked the film The Amazing Spider-Man. Out of ten, what would you give it? Uh, about a four. <laughs> or a three. Or I, give it, I give it a three. Yeah, it has um, okay elements. Yeah. But a lot of terrible, terrible elements. As a fan of Spider-Man, as a fan of kind of comics in general, I enjoy superheroes. I enjoy... Yeah. I, even though I'm getting a bit sick of them, I, I do enjoy them. If your Spider-Man film doesn't have the line, with great, res uh, with great power comes great responsibility, you failed as a Spider-Man movie. <laughs> and they were too embarrassed to say that. Yeah. It's like, if you had a Batman movie, Batman's parents were called off-screen. Yeah. Same kind of deal. Yeah. Um, even Christopher Nolan did that. He, yeah. And he wanted to abandon as much as possible. Yeah, he wanted to get <laughs> as much of comic as possible. Yeah. Um, so... <laughs> What if his parents are alive the whole way through? <laughs> they were like, that'd sell more dollars. <laughs> yeah, get more money. <laughs> um, but yeah, so then what did they do after The Amazing Spider-Man? Well, in between The Amazing Spider-Man, I think in the same um, year, actually, um, a little film called uh, The Avengers came oh. out. You may, might have heard of it. Oh, yeah. Uh, a huge... Oh, with Ralph Fiennes and Uma Thurman. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that umbrella. That, yeah. that famous adaptation of that 60s spy series. Yeah. Well, well, that's, that's what you're referring yeah. to. Yeah, <laughs> when I came out, he made a, an estimate shit zillion dollars. Oh, yeah. Um, and after that, it was, kind of, it was kind of popular amongst people because it was the whole idea of Marvel make Marvel movies making a shared universe. Oh, yeah. And all the characters would come together for the Avengers. And it was a huge, huge hit. So, other studios took note and they did <laughs> similar things. Yeah. Uh, X-Men have kind of rebooted itself with Days of Future Past, where it drew together the reboot universe and the old universe together into one. Never s not seen that yet. It's a pretty decent film. Pretty okay. good. And uh, Spider-Man, for some odd reason, is doing the same thing. So, they've kind of retrofitted <laughs> yeah. an expanded universe onto what the film we're going to discuss this evening, The Amazing Spider-Man 2. The Amazing Spider-Man 2, directed <laughs> by Mark Webb. Who I'm convinced was only... Uh, hired because of his last name. He's not no title yeah. otherwise. Oh yes, Webb is like a spider would make. Yeah, yeah, like a spider. <laughs> We're not bought by your web of deceit. <laughs> oh. <laughs> we are <laughs> indifferent to you. You can yeah. spit it all you want. Exactly. Yeah. But you aren't going to convince us you got it for any other reason, Mark <laughs> Webb. You hack. Exactly. We haven't seen your 40 days, 400 days of summer. <laughs> no. And we don't want to. You no. can keep your garden, you keep Levitt. It. Take <laughs> it. Um... So, yeah, so they're using Amazing Spider-Man 2 as, like, a launch point for yeah. 
the wider cinematic Spider-Man universe. We're going to do like a Sinister Six film, a Venom film, and then Amazing Spider-Man 3 and 4. But at this stage, considering how underperformed Amazing Spider-Man 2 did, it's probably not going to happen. <laughs> probably not going to happen. Which is what, good. What a blight that would be on the cinematic world. I know. <laughs> Lack of Spider-Man movies. Exactly. Kids, and it being the dystopian future, the reason we're in this mess is because of no Va Venom film. <laughs> I know, man. It was the, a world without Venom is like a world without laughter. <laughs> it's a sad and useless thing. Yeah, because yeah. well, everyone's been crying out for a Venom film. Exactly. Well, um, Venom was such a memorable character in um, Spider-Man Three. The two minutes he had in that, yeah. everyone wanted to know what his his beef was. It's how to expand his character. Exactly. Um, yeah, this film is like watching um, Detritus on screen. <laughs> the film has like it's, it's a just nightmare. yeah, it's just everything. You if it's like if you just wrote a thing, uh, it's like someone made a list of things that annoy me, and then put them around a very basic plot. <laughs> no plot. Uh, no plot. Sorry, a, a list of events. A list of events. Yeah. <laughs> that occur yeah. in a ran in a seemingly random order, <laughs> to just try and get you as, as many annoying things in as possible. And all it's doing is just basically setting up yep. future instalments of this yep. grown inducing series. Yeah, hey, people like uh, people like Paul Giamatti, let's give him a ridiculous <laughs> accent and <laughs> ten seconds of screen time. <laughs> well, but they, they, they bookend the film, it's almost like an art film. Yeah, it's like... Um, it's, it's like the first time you watch it, you think like, no, oh, this is bad. And the, and the second time you watch it, like, oh, I see what they did there, they've ruined everything. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So... Um, there is, I'm not even joking, there is no plot. Um, yeah, like, um, Electro gets ki uh, kidnapped and then released. <laughs> uh, it is a very hard film to actually describe what happens. So... I actually think that may have been what hampered its ability to perform. Really? A lot of films, you think of them, they have at least something <laughs> you can... They have a plot. <laughs> well, yeah, like, popular film, I don't know, Godfather. A gangster, a gangster saga about a family. Seven, a serial killer film. Yeah. Uh, even Batman. Um, a Joe. Um, a man tries to destroy the city. A man dressed as a bat tries to stop him. Your, your film needs to have a basic core. And commercial then, films do. Yeah, commercial films yeah. do. And then the, the structure you build around it is what's interesting. Yeah. Like yeah, like like you use examples there. I like Star Wars. Yeah. Basic story. Boy goes to rescue a princess. Yeah. That's the basic plot, and then they build the structure around it, which yeah. is, you know, the Death Star, and it's sci-fi, and it's all mm. these different things. Well, yeah, because the thing is, if you describe something to... If you're thinking like a studio executive, you're thinking, simple plot with enough to get it recommended. So, Star Wars. Oh, yeah, um, a princess gets kidnapped, and um, a farm boy has to save him. That's a palatable thing that you could yeah. describe to people. If someone asked you, what happened in Amazing Spider-Man 2... <laughs> Oh, uh, I'm not really sure. Well, who's going to want to see that? Well, then? exactly. <laughs> so the random sequences we've got, we've, we've got about six different strands. Yeah. We've got um, Peter the... investigating the boring and no one was <laughs> interested in the first film, Mr. Where His Parents Went. Yeah. Because the least interesting thing about Spider-Man's origin story is that element. <laughs> yeah. Um, is that even part of his origin story? I, th I think it's been rewritten a bit, but uh, I think originally they were just dead. Oh, he was just orphaned and his aunt and uncle looked after him. Yeah. And I think in later reboot comics might have changed it. Nerds, tell me. Please. Yeah, tell us. Like, tell we want to know what... Not nerds, just a comic book aficionados. Yeah, t tell us. Yeah. yeah, tell us what happened. And, tell us where um, that kind of came from. Yeah. So we've got that strand, which is continuing from the first film. Yeah. You've got... We've got um, the love of... Uh, we'll go in like terms of uh, importance. The next yeah. one I would argue would be the relationship between Peter and his girlfriend. Gwen um, Stacy. Yeah, Gwen Blandy. Yeah. <laughs> Gwen Bl Blandy. Yeah. yeah. And, um, and then you've got, um, well, Electro. No, not even that. No, no, Electro, Harry, no. Um, Harry Osborn, his best friend who he never mentioned in the first film, returns yeah. and he, his dad has just died and... Chris Cooper in a brilliant one scene. Um, <laughs> yeah. He's like infected, he's dying of a disease and... Uh, I never loved you. I never loved you. <laughs> uh, and basically Harry Osborn's got the same disease so he wants to kind of yeah. find a cure for it. Uh, so he thinks Spider-Man's blood <laughs> will save him. So for some to, reason. For some reason. Uh, so that's that storyline. Um, Fourth storyline. Um, then you've got to say Electro. Then Electro, who's like the main advertising of the film. 
Jamie yeah. Fox uh, with his with his haircut all like all like that to show his pathetic. And he's, he's got and he's got yeah gap, gap teeth. I mean, I, any, 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 does he have a lisp? Yeah, yeah, I thought so. I mean, and um, wears glasses. The ultimate. Uh, Thing in Hollywood to know, show you what you doing, When you yeah. have a character who has glasses, he's beyond repair. Yeah. He's a damaged man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I didn't notice this, but uh, Red Letter Media point of his cell, but apparently when he becomes a lecture, uh -huh. it gives him all his amazing electric powers and he also fixes his gap too. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that is um, that Anecto part was by far the only bit of the film which has some joy in it. Cause it's so <laughs> it's hilariously awful. I, I love the sequence when he becomes electronic. He drops into that like vat of electric eels. Like <laughs> it's not even palatable. Like okay, he, he works in a big power plant. You know, he might get electrocuted to death by these super powered rods, and that's when he becomes electro. But he falls into a vat, a vat of, of like, eels. eels. <laughs> it's so weird. Um, the special effects were just. Just god awful. <laughs> and, uh, have you seen what Electro's costume looks like? Um, you mean the normal one? The original one Electro. In... No, yeah. not really. Is, is it? it... <laughs> he's got like basically like a big like yellow star head, and it's got like green. His green. I'll show you it afterwards. It's pretty ridiculous. Oh no! Yeah, but um, but I don't know. I prefer that over Jamie Foxx's look. Remember those weird dubstep sequences? Boop, 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 boop. And it goes Peter Parker. Peter Parker. Yeah. <laughs> oh my. Well, I didn't. It just doesn't like. His motivation is supposed to be that Spider-Man was like a hero for him. Yeah, because he was because Spider-Man needed him. Yeah, he's like, you're my guy on the street. I'm looking after you, and you know, Spidey's saying it's a bit of like a throw-off thing, but he really takes it to heart because basically it's the same plot as Jim Carrey and Batman Forever. Ah, you know, like, like the Riddler. Oh, <laughs> that masterpiece. That masterpiece. <laughs> All I remember from that film is just when uh, Jim Jim Carrey thrusts towards the screen and his like <laughs> burned into my head. <laughs> You don't remember Tommy Lee Jones' awful performance. Oh god, it's Two Face. Yeah. yeah. Oh god. Um, but, um, but yeah, uh, hobo eroticism aside. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so it feels the same plot as uh, Jim Carrey and uh, Batman yeah. Forever. But it just doesn't work. It's horrible. Well, it just doesn't work because they've given it no. Um, what? They've given it motive. Like, no, There's no motive. motive for There's it. Or a reason. But, right. but, but the reason why he wants to go after Spider Man is because Spider Man forgot his name. Uh, or something. Uh, it's just stupid. He's, he's like destroying the city and he doesn't mean to and then Spider-Man like stops him. Like what do you think's gonna happen? <laughs> you can't do that! <laughs> yeah it's just stupid. Uh, the whole section of that film is just terrible. Everything with Electro in is awful. It's like Jamie Lee Foxx is giving this comedic over the top <laughs> performance. And just when he thought he'd claw back some goodwill from like Django Unchained he kind, oh, of, yeah, yeah. He kind of throws it all away. Yeah. <laughs> Quinton, you're giving me my integrity. Now, <laughs> now give me a dollar. Throw it all away. <laughs> yeah. Fuck it. I 